A farmer in Africa with a smartphone has more information power in his hands than Clinton did when he was president. This rate of change is not slowing down, it's actually increasing. If this was actually a true exponential, it would be linear. It was actually tilting upwards. If you went back 10 years ago, we had about 400 million connected devices on the internet. Today we're up to about 8 billion connected devices. We're going to get to 50 billion by the end of this decade. Uh, and shortly after that, we're going to a trillion. And so on that, just that one metric, we're going from 8 billion connected devices today to a trillion and probably within our careers, definitely. Uh, we think we're 30, 40 years into the information revolution. On that metric, we're about 1% of the way there. We're literally just starting. And so we need to re-architect every single one of these things, especially over this next few years as 3 billion new minds come online. And essentially, all of these, all of these are moving at this pace, driven by this pace of computation, right? It allows us to do image processing in real time, etc. And this is essentially how fast it's going. We've had 40% annual increase in desktop computing speed now for 40 years. Uh, if the top speed of a car had grown at the same 40% annual rate, we would have a car that went faster than the speed of light. And we're seeing a set of very dramatic outcomes as we go into this world. The first is we're digitizing the world. All our memories are now in our smartphones, they're not in our heads anymore. All our relationships are digital via social networks and not analog. 20 years ago, AI experts thought that there was no way a, com a computer would beat the world's best chess player. Uh, and now the opposite is true. Now there's no human being that can beat a, no computer, no human being that can beat a computer at chess. Uh, and artificial intelligence is moving extraordinarily quickly. And the reason we use AI is that our old brains have not had an upgrade in about 50,000 years. Watson, which is the, the IBM uh, system that beat the two best human Jeopardy champions a couple of years ago. And at the time, AI experts said there's no way this would ever happen. The Jeopardy is a really difficult game. It has nuances, double meanings, puns, humor, irony. And they thought there was no way you could have that level of uh, cognition. And not only did it beat them, it actually tripled their combined score, thrashed them, right? Uh, it's just quite incredible. One of the questions was, uh, uh, what is an angry speech delivered by a pie topping? And the answer was a meringue harangue. And Watson got that correct. So what happens when you take that and apply that to healthcare or education? Right? When you go to the doctor, you get the wrong diagnosis about 35% of the time. And so uh, how do you use these types of technologies to assist with that? Biotech and bioinformatics is another technology moving at this pace. We've learned how to read DNA exceedingly well. Um, the cost of DNA sequencing is now moving at five times the pace of Moore's Law. It's doubling in its capability every four months. It cost $2.7 billion to sequence the first human genome uh, 12 years ago. Second one was about $400 million. Third one was about $50 million. Today we're down to $1,000. And now we're starting to learn how to write. There's a team working on the woolly mammoth. We're about two years away from this. It will be slightly confused when it shows up. Its habitat will have changed quite considerably. Um, teams of college students now get together to hack DNA in interesting ways, and they have contests to see who can have the most creative use of this. Uh, the winning team from last year took phosphorus, the glow-in-the-dark substance, crossed it with the DNA of a cat, and you can buy a pet that glows in the dark. This is an artist who can take a cigarette butt and by analyzing the DNA on the cigarette can recreate the face of the person that smoked it. Oh, right? You can do this today. But today the inflection point that we've hit, we, we can actually see what's happening in the brain in real time. And when you have that feedback loop, really interesting things start happening because what happens when you take all of these fast moving technologies and apply it to this organ that we still don't know fully how to use. Uh, we still don't know why we sleep, uh, for example. Um, this is a team out of Japan. You lie down in an MRI machine and go to sleep, and they actually can trap the images coming off your visual cortex as you're asleep. Their objective is to play your dreams back to you the next day. Solar energy. The efficiency of solar cells is now on an exponential curve. It's doubling in its price performance every 22 months. At this pace, we will hit 100% of world energy supply in 25 years. But fundamentally, we simply are not set up for this. All of the mechanisms that we use to run the world, our politics, our civics, our social systems, legal systems, healthcare, education, intellectual property, you name it, all designed for a world a few hundred years ago, right? not for the world of today. We think that civilization coming from the Industrial Revolution has kind of peaked, and we are headed for a bit of a mess at the moment. Every single one of our systems need to be re-architected and our mission statement is to create a new generation of leaders 
uh, that will help manage that. And as we go into this kind of trough that we're going to head into over this next, as all of our existing systems break down and we deal with the tension and stress of that, our mission is to kind of balance that out a bit. And the problem is the technologies aren't slowing down. George Bush, for ideological reasons, said no stem cell research, right? All the research we went to China, Canada, Australia, the stem cell research has continued exactly at pace. The U.S. went from number one in the world to number eight in the world, right? So if you try and stop it, it just goes somewhere else. And now that it's kind of information-based, you can't actually stop it. So our only option is to stay on top of it and, and uh, change ourselves to adopt, uh, to be suited to the technology. That's the challenge, right? It's a human vision, a legacy we want to leave behind us.